I'd like to welcome you to BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news where we uncover the truth. Baltimore City Councilman Bill Henry, how are you, sir? I'm well, Donnie. Happy New Year. Happy New Year 2014. What's on the agenda for you? For me, the uh, first thing on my agenda is I'm running for the State Senate here in the 43rd District and uh, looking forward to taking the opportunity to help even more of my neighbors and constituents uh, in more ways over the coming uh, coming years. Okay, but you're already a council person. I am, and I've enjoyed being a council person, and uh, there are many things that the city council is able to do in order to improve the lives of uh, the residents of Baltimore, but there are some things that are reserved to the state. Uh, for example, uh, liquor law, banking law, uh, a lot of environmental protection, these things are uh, issues where, in order to have a real effect, I need to be working at them on the state level. Joan Carter Conway, she's a current state senator, but apparently you feel like you can do a better job. Well, she's been uh, the senator for a while for our district, and um, I know that she has her agenda, but I don't know that it matches the agenda of the communities that I've been meeting with and that I've been working with for years now, and um, I think I can do a better job of serving their agenda. Okay, so what's on your agenda for the 43rd? Well, the first thing I would like to deal with is, and this is something where the City Council has passed a resolution uh, previously that went unlistened to in Annapolis, is we would like to see the liquor laws for the city made more community friendly. Uh, there, are, there have been concerns about how the liquor board runs, and most of those concerns are management concerns that are not an issue of law, but there is one particular issue that is uh, something that the General Assembly could change and has refused to do so um, each time it's been asked. And that is when a liquor license is transferred from one party to another, the opportunity is there in other jurisdictions to take into account the character of the existing establishment and its existing customers. Uh, in Baltimore City, however, the only thing... The character of the customers? The character of the customers. So if you have a business that has been a problem for a neighborhood where the customers of the business cause a problem for the neighbors, under current law, that is not something that can be entered into the conversation when the liquor board is holding the public hearing on whether or not to transfer the license. The only thing the liquor board is allowed to consider is the character of the applicant, the new person who's coming in. If a store or a bar has been a chronic problem for years under multiple owners, and the neighborhood has realized that the problem is the establishment, not a particular owner, then that does not have any type of bearing on the liquor board under the current law. But in other jurisdictions, that would be an issue that could be part of the discussion. Okay. What else is on your agenda? Uh, the other, one of the other things that I'd like to look at is responsible banking. Uh, there, are, uh, there are ordinances that are being uh, considered in other states where the banks are being held to the idea that they have to actually be helping the areas in which they're doing business. And what I would like to see is I'd like to see that brought to Maryland. Um, I think that we have a lot of problems right now in terms of the banks take from the community but don't necessarily give back to the community. Some do, some don't. I would like to see a situation where the ones that do are rewarded and encouraged and given more government business, and the ones that don't are punished for it. Okay. Can we one more agenda item? Uh, one more agenda item. I would say, well, I would hope that anybody who wants to represent Baltimore City in the General Assembly would have high on their agenda getting the remainder of the money needed to fulfill the 10-year school facility program. 
We uh, were all very happy with the one point one billion. And is this going to? Are you speaking to Thornton, the Thornton Commission? No, I'm speaking to the ten year facilities plan that the school system came up with. Where last year everyone was very excited that the General Assembly granted us one point one billion dollars towards the plan. What has not been talked about as loudly has been the fact that the plan requires more than $2.4 billion to complete. So the money that we have gotten commitments for is really only enough for the first three or four years of the plan. And I do not want to see a situation where we've been able to fix some of the schools around the city and then we get to year three or four and there's no money to do the rest of them. Okay, give me three of your accomplishments that you're most proud of as a councilman. Well, last year I finished, um, after five years, it took five years to get this passed, the uh, late night commercial operations licensing program. And this is modeled somewhat on the existing liquor law, where if you're a business and you want to be open between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m., and you're in a community or adjacent to a community, then you have to come to the city and get a license to be open in the middle of the night. And if you are causing problems or your business or your customers are causing problems for the neighbors, the neighbors have the opportunity to protest that license. And um, that license has to be renewed every year. And the communities get a chance every year to come before um, either telling the finance department or coming before the zoning board, the appeals board, and say why this business is a problem and should not be allowed to be open in the middle of the night. It's one of the tools that the police department can use to address a business that may be causing problems just in the middle of the night, but is not causing such large problems all the time that it needs to be addressed as a, with a padlock. A couple more. Uh, let's see. One of the first things that I did in the council, and one of the ones that I'm still proudest of, is I was the first person to introduce and pass a resolution of support by the City Council for Civil Marriage. Did that back in 2008, several years before many of the other colleagues got on board more firmly and visibly and vocally in terms of supporting uh, marriage equality throughout the state. And then third, and this is kind of a local one, um, I, I did a tweak to the, um, the law governing the retail business district licenses to enable those types of business organizations throughout the city to use the money that they raise to not just do promotions and advertising, which is what had been restricted to previously in the law, but now, thanks to the change I put in, they're also allowed to use that money for sanitation and public safety efforts. Okay, so what's your vision for the 43rd? My vision for the 43rd district is that um, the state senate is a big job and the districts are bigger than council districts, I get that. But um, every though, even though people think of the General Assembly as a, a part-time legislature, it still should be thought of as a year-round job because one of the concerns, one of the very personal concerns I have is the last six years that I've been going around to all the community associations in my district on a regular basis. I see at most our senator coming by once a year after the General Assembly session to talk about what she did. And I think that a senator should come by more than just once a year. Has anyone challenged her before? Uh, Two, if you, if you, two terms ago, there was a guy named Dave Vane who ran back in 2006. Yeah, but if, if you don't have a consistent challenger or someone, your competition makes people work harder. Well, then hopefully we'll see some harder work in the coming weeks. Good stuff. Baltimore City Councilman Bill Henry running for state senate here in the 43rd. Keep watching BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover the truth.